hi guys welcome to my channel and uh if you're new here please do like subscribe and welcome to learning unit 10 so at learning unit 10 uh remember this is a build up so if you haven't watched from learning unit 1 to learning unit 9 i suggest you quickly start by doing that so that you understand what we're talking about so now at learning unit 10 they are talking about the professional conduct requirements for external auditors please do remember i'm using the aue 1501 uh, 2021 uh, study guide and auditing is not really an overly dynamic uh, module meaning even if you're going to be having a, a new as uh, new as newer version of a study guide the study guide that i'm going to be using is still going to be helpful and you can always listen along and make notes for yourself and just hoping that we enhance your understanding so that you understand what happens in this auditing uh, module and so that you do not struggle too much with it. So I'm not going to be posting parts of the study guide. Those parts, you're going to be finding them on Telegram or you're going to be finding them on official UNISA platforms, but it is the AUE uh, 1501, uh, the 2021 chapter, uh, the 2021 study guide that I'm going to be using so right now they're not talking about the professional conduct requirements for external auditors so you have to also remember the one that we did for internal auditors and i was uh, very clear with you guys that uh the things that they stated there is the principles or the conduct for internal those were the same conducts for the entire auditing function so the only difference from the video that we made and the things that you're going to be coming across now is you now have to bear in mind that there is now going to be a professional body which is now going to be monitoring you which is psyca and irba so each and everything that you're going to be doing it you are going to be monitored by those uh two bodies the south african institute of chartered accountants which is psyca and you're also going to be uh monitored by the independent regulatory board for auditors which is the rba so your conduct can be reported let's say you do something funny let's say you take a bribe for instance you can the person you took the bribe from can even go and report you with enough evidence and you might even lose your license or face greater consequences so in my interactions with auditors one guy was like saying even in a traffic fine i rather take the 500 rand fine as compared to paying a bribe because the person that I'm trying to pay a bribe to can go and report me and the, sec the consequences thereof can be very, very severe for me. So as we said or as we spoke on the previous video, the principles remain the same or probably for external auditors, there is now an addition. But like the one that they start off there, they start off with integrity, right? Integrity, the thing the key word that you have to understand or the key word that you have to remember is honest. As an auditor, you have to be honest. That is integrity. It's a principle that has to govern each and everything that you do. Integrity, you must be straightforward. You must be honest in all your dealings and you have to be dealing with truthfulness. Then from integrity, there's objectivity, meaning you don't have to be biased. There mustn't be a conflict of interest or undue uh, influence for instance if your company is going to be auditing a company where your wife is a director you have to not you are not supposed to at least accept that engagement you're not supposed to participate because you will be biased number one and you won't be objective so if there's anything that serves to threaten your objectivity you must disclose and also disclose you must also decline those are engagement so objectivity they are still saying the same thing that you spoke about you must not allow bias you must not there must be no conflict of info, uh, interest and there must be no uh, undue influence then there is also professional competence and uk so it's almost like they just added uk and professionalism there but you must have the knowledge the definition is still the same you must have knowledge you must have the skill required by the client for you to perform the services that are going to be required of you confidentiality we spoke in depth in that video and if you didn't listen to that video go and play that video again it will be very much beneficial so confident 
confidentiality as an external auditor you're going to be coming across a lot of information even like uh, legal cases that the company that you're now performing an audit is going to be going through you're going to be going through a lot of information which is confidential please do keep that information confidential so you are not allowed to even disclose or use that information for your own personal advantage for any reason for any reason whatsoever you're not allowed you have to operate with maximum confidentiality the addition now we now have a fifth principle which is applicable to external auditors which is professional behavior meaning you have to comply to the laws and regulations to avoid anything that discredits you so professional behavior is also coming and it looks the same with number three which is your professional competence it also looks the same with integrity but please you have to be professional right comply with the relevant laws and regulations to avoid any action that discredits your auditing profession so you now have to understand that these principles are going to be governing you as an auditor and try to apply these principles even on a personal space so that you uh so that you, you it makes your learning uh very very much uh easier so now that we have the principles these principles there is also threats that are going to be uh, uh applicable what when you when you talk about threats these are things that are adverse or these are things that are most likely going to hamper you from exhibiting uh from exhibiting uh what you call it from exhibiting the principles which have been highlighted so the threats that you're going to be coming across there you have a threat uh a threat by uh, which is uh, titled self-interest right so with the self-interest threat right there might be a financial interest right which might influence the judgment or behavior they have examples there for instance a firm having uh, undue dependence on the total fees from a client let's say your firm has uh, one big client and this big client when they make the payment the payment uh, is the biggest which is the payment that you use to pay uh, the salaries of the staff and everything so you are most likely your your judgment is most likely going to be impaired because of that reason that's why you might need to have a lot of clients on your table if this is going to be your biggest client you might come across what they are now talking about there as a self-interest threat right so then they also have a, a threat which is called self-review so to just summarize what they're talking about there self-review they are only saying you are, your duty there is to review the financial statements and give an opinion you can you cannot then also assist the client in uh let's say populating or coming up with the financial statements let's say they don't have an accountant then you guys are also assisting them with uh coming up with financial statements so the moment you guys assist with them with coming up with financial statements by the time you want to perform an audit you are trying to audit the things that you have done yourself so meaning you are now uh, under that self review threat so they are saying a member of the assurance team being or having recently uh, been a director or an officer with the client right a member or of or the of the assurance team having been employed by the client in a position to exert significant influence in the matter of the engagement so the teams that are going to be coming and performing the audit they must not be related in any form or format to the client so that this threat of self-review is neutralized then we have advocacy advocacy saying the threat that the registered uh, auditor will promote the a client's position to uh, the point that the registered auditor objectivity is compromised so for instance you are performing an audit of your favorite brand of makeup the company that uh, does the makeup and you like them so you advocate for the for you you advocate it's almost like you're saying you favor them so because you favor the brand right then you that favoritism also then filters down to your judgment or to the way that you audit so advocacy can then become a threat familiarity if you keep on uh, having uh, 
performing an audit at the same client, let's say for a long period, let's say for 10 years, or you keep on doing the same auditors for 12 years and stuff, you're bound to be familiar to the client. You're bound to now have close relations with the directors. You're now going to have close relations uh, with other employees who are actually in key positions of influence. So when you have those uh, relations and stuff, those relations are then going to be problematic because your reviews might end up being impaired. So you have to understand there's going to be a threat, a threat of familiarity if you are going to have a long relationship with the client. Then there's also going to be an intimidation threat, right? So an intimidation threat uh, is when your firm is uh, being threatened that, okay, if you don't give us a certain level of report or a certain format or version of report, we are going to terminate our engagement. And when you, they terminate your engagement, you also understand that that probably is your biggest client. So if they terminate, it also has financial implications on, your, on you. So when you are now being threatened by the client, they can be saying, no, we're threatening to sue you if you perform in a certain manner or if you don't do one or two things uh, that the client might want, you are being threatened. So that becomes a threat, which is in intimidation. So you must also have, uh, you must be mindful of these threats that they talk about, what they talk about, self-interest, self-review, advocacy, familiarity, intimidation. And at this level, they might want to bring a mix and match where they're saying, okay, match the threat as per the definition. So you have to also understand, okay, this talks about this, this talks about this, so that you can easily match them for yourself or you can understand exactly what is going on. So you're going to have the principles and there's an additional principle, which is professional behavior. After you now have an additional principle of professional behavior, also understand that those uh, those principles that you have come across or that you now are, which are now a part of you, are going to be threatened. How are they going to be threatened? They are going to be threatened by self-interest. They are going to be threatened by self-review. They are going to be threatened by advocacy. They are going to be threatened as well by familiarity. They are also going to be threatened by intimidation so you just have to understand the gist of what is going to be happening there and all the best with your studies thank you so much remember to like subscribe and to also drop a comment thank you